So I'm here at the park for a quick hike, uh, but I just thought I'd show you what this looks like in the uh, with that film on here. Now that it's kind of baked in, I mean you can't even tell that it's on there. Let's get a close up of that paint. I think it looks really, really nice. So it's first time driving it. I've been letting it sit in my driveway like they told me to, to let that sun, you know, bake it on to because uh, I guess it could contract a bit I got to check the edges at some point and make sure none of the edges are coming loose um, but that should with a 10-year warranty really protect the car on the trip and we'll get back to the trip in just a minute let's let's get on the trail and uh, we'll make a quick quick video here so we're doing a quick section of the Florida Trail and just wanted to throw up a brief uh, couple minute video about the uh, the Prius Prime um, you know once again I mean you know I'm trying to get on the road for 3,000 miles but uh, it turns out the title is not in the name of the lien holder which is a bank that it, well credit union that I went through so I gotta I gotta go back to the dealer in Homosasa and uh, let them fix that plus we had a tire sensor go off but uh when i this is another thing you know for for a 3000 mile trip um i was absolutely shocked i checked all the tires of course to see if any of them were low and uh all of them were low uh except for one that was really low and that's what kicked the sensor off but had i just taken off on the road um that would have been you know for 3000 miles and not check the tire pressure i mean you know you know you're supposed to check your tire pressure but i thought since I've only had in the car about a month or two tops that the, you know the dealer but you know I didn't expect those tires to be low now what the tire pressure is on that Toyota Prius Prime is you want uh, and it's kind of a weird uh, you want 36 pounds cold cold tire pressure okay this isn't after you've driven it on a hot road for all day but uh, cold tire pressure is 36 pounds in the front and uh, I think it's uh, 35 pounds in the back which is Kind of strange, you know. Let's whip around and get the trail here. You know, it's it's uh, it's interesting. Everything I keep running into. Let me adjust this just a little bit. There we go. Um, the other thing is uh, one person I'd like you to watch on uh, YouTube um, is Scotty Kilmer. Um, if, if you're a car buff, you're bound to know who he is. I don't know how he does his videos, but they're very very professional. He must have a staff. Of people i mean he makes it look like he's just a you know a crazy uh, mechanic that makes videos but i mean the professionalism of him is, is astounding and he seems to be very very knowledgeable and i i guess he's been a mechanic most of his life but anyway the uh, reason i'm getting into this was uh he talked about uh taking care of the batteries on these hybrid cars and uh some of it's just common sense i mean you're not going to park a hybrid car in the hot sunlight. Um, you, you know, you're always going to want to try to find some shade to put it in and keep that car as cool as possible because the heat will destroy those batteries. Um, so I'll be keeping the hybrid in the garage and, and just leaving the uh, the other car out in the sun. Um, so that's uh, that that. I mean, it's still hot in that garage, but at least the sun's not beating down on it and destroying it the uh, the other thing was the charge on the batteries because this is a plug-in uh, hybrid the prime is um, was uh, Scotty and I you know we had talked about this in a previous video was that uh, you want to keep it from 20% um, to 80% when you're just driving around town or you know the car is going to sit for three or four days that's when those batteries are happiest which is consistent with the batteries in your computer so if you have a computer same same thing you know a laptop uh, you want to keep that battery they, they say 50 percent for my laptop but uh which is right in between you know when you think about it but um i'm just gonna you know when i get home i'll charge that battery up and just keep it at about 50 to 80 percent and that's uh where it'll be most of the time except the exception to that rule is when you're going to do what i'm doing and take a big long trip and, uh, and then Scotty said, be sure and charge it up all the way. So, which makes sense. I mean, if you're going to take a long trip, of course you can charge it up all the way. Uh, but, it, you know, that's the only time that you would put a full charge. Now, does the cold 
hurt the batteries. Uh, according to Scotty, no, the cold doesn't hurt them, but it does, of course, reduce the performance. So you're not going to get as good a performance on that battery with the uh, uh, in the cold as you would uh, um, in a normal temperature. And it's never <laughs> it's not normal here in Florida until the winter time. So that is one big, big drawback uh, for having a hybrid like that in, in Florida is because of the heat. And, uh, and you know, when you go to a store or something, sometimes it's impossible to get that car into a, uh, um, you know, a, a shady spot, which is uh, even more uh, reason for tinting the windows. That's why I tinted the windows. I kind of wish I had gone with the more expensive uh, that refracts like 90 to 10 90 to 98 percent or whatever it was if you watch that video You'll see when when we did the discussion with the uh, Ocala car audio, but my tinting should get about 70 80 percent of that uh, that UV in the car, so that's uh, And to me, I thought that was adequate, you know, plus it was a lot cheaper it was like half price and I good God I had to save money somewhere it was getting expensive in case you're wondering, we're, we're at the park just doing a little section of the Florida Trail and uh, I'll just stay on the pavement at this point because uh, the ticks are out and and uh, I know they maintain these trails in this park really, really well, but uh, it's a hot, humid day. So we'll just stay on the asphalt. This video is turning a little longer than I thought it was going to. So that was a, that was a biggie. The other thing that shocked me was, because uh, I used to put that sea foam in my car you know about once every six months or so and uh, Scotty says that stuff is just a waste of money you know back when it came out it was great for two cycle engines and if you still have a two cycle engine it's uh, that's what it was made for and they never really corrected the formula so when you put it into a you know like a especially a um, precision car like these new ones uh, that new Prius Prime it's not going to do any good in fact it you know, probably might even uh, uh, be a detriment. Um, so that was a biggie for me. I was like, wow, that'll, that'll save me some money. <laughs> I won't be using that sea foam no more. Another one was, uh, he didn't like the, um, and I can't remember his reasons. You'd have to watch uh, the videos. But he didn't like Armor All at all. Said it's, uh, it's a waste of money. So, uh, but he had some protectant that he was using. And it's not the same one as me. I, I've shown you mine in other videos. It's a... Uh, I think it's called three in one or something like that. I can't remember. I, I got it at home. Maybe we'll stick it on the back end of this video. Um, so those were two things that that really shocked me. Um, you know, no armor all, no sea foam. That'll save me some money right there. Uh, so we're kind of knocking it out. So tomorrow we'll get the get the title done. Let them check that right front tire. Make sure there's not a nail in it. I don't know why it was so low. Of course, I'm I was kind of pissed off, but I'm just not going to worry about it. The, all the tires were low on air uh, and I'm not talking you know just one pound no they were down at like 31 so that indicates to me that the technician who probably inspected the car uh, was you know just a basic technician he he was going by you know most cars you're gonna run the tires at about 32 33 pounds you know that's because it gives you a softer ride and tires are made for that uh, but uh, not, on, not on those Prius tires. So it indicates to me he did not look or did not know. Well, he didn't look, obviously, that the, at the door because it's in, inside the driver's side door is where you can get the, uh, the, the pressure uh, or you can look in the owner's manual, either one. Um, the, uh, the last thing I'll cover here because I've started doing it on uh, whenever I get home for the day, okay, uh, we've, we talked about the procedure to cut the key off see these proximity keys they'll continuously sit there and transmit uh look you know hey car are you there car you know car's out of range hey car are you there car's out of range well that uh that wastes the battery on that key and you say well how much does the battery cost say, probably not that much but i mean do you want to waste your time changing out the battery so the procedure is all you're going to do when you get home is you gotta lock the car anyway. I mean, you know, well, unless it's in your garage, but I mean, still, I, it wouldn't hurt to do it. I mean, but you press down on that lock key and hold it for four seconds, okay? Or I just hold it for more, because sometimes if you just, uh, if you lit up too soon, uh, it, it doesn't work. But then you, and then you press the uh, unlock button uh, twice or more. 
and uh, I think it said twice. I'd have to look at the manual again, and that'll uh, that'll get it going. All right, guys, that's it. Peace out and be free. I always think of something to add. I forgot to uh, to mention the uh, how easy it was. I you know because I called the uh, the bank or this credit union and about that title, and they said, well, you got to get it corrected. You know, blah blah blah, and. Uh, so I said, well, how, how the hell do I do that? You know, I didn't know. I mean, did I, would you go to the um, tax, well, here in Florida, it's tax collector's office. Uh, but I didn't want to pay the money. I already paid the dealer, you know. So I thought that was going to be a real drawn out battle, you know, with them because they did the title wrong. And uh, to the dealer's credit, they just said, bring it in and we'll fix it. That was it. I mean, that was the end of the conversation. So if you do run into the same situation that I do, you know, hopefully you get a good dealer. Seems like these guys are pretty, pretty okay in my mind. Um, you know, just just go back to the dealer now, because I bought it a long ways away. <laughs> that's that's going to be a bit of a drive. You know, in fact, I've known people that have traveled all the way to Maine because they got a much better deal on the car and picked it up there. You know, so then you really can't go back to the dealer, but. You know, you can always go to other dealers. It's just Scotty recommended going back to the dealer where you bought the car uh, because, you know, they're the, they're the ones that should take care of it. You don't want, you can't burden another dealer who didn't make any money off of you with with uh, doing that, you know. So uh, anyway, I just wanted to throw that in to the video. Uh, so it's, uh, boy, it's hot. That's, a, that's another thing I've been, you know, I'm running that air conditioning in the car on eco mode. And uh, it's, it, to me, I mean, it's supposed to be saving gas. Because uh, I do run it in HV mode most of the time. Um, as we talked about, the gas electric, so that I'm not putting, uh, especially in the heat. I don't I don't think running it on, running it on just on the battery is, is, is that good an idea. But uh, anyway, um, boy, it just, it, it cools the car right off. I mean, I, I don't know why you would ever need it cooler uh, unless it gets over 100 here or something but I mean it's 90 between 90 and 95 degrees today with high humidity and I was nice and cool in the car on eco mode just wanted to throw that into the video all right peace out again and be free okay just shoot me two other things I learned watching uh, Scotty was he has a whole video on uh, fuel now it wasn't, <laughs> you had to, it was a long video, I had to wait to, all the way to the end, I was just wanted to know the uh, fuel requirement for this thing is the 87 octane. Now I thought putting the the uh, the higher, you know, 93 in here, it's at Shell, uh, they call it the Shell Nitro, would, uh, would be better for it. And I'm going to ask the dealer about it uh, tomorrow. But uh, according to Scotty, uh, you just put whatever the manufacturer says that goes in the car because those higher octanes are really just about the uh, those uh, turbocharged engines and the, the different types of engines that uh, they would develop a knock because of the way that they do the um, the pistons and, and the compression and everything whereas these cars uh, most modern cars now you just need that 87 octane so don't waste your money on the on the higher octanes just put the but I mean do go to uh, you know you want to get a high detergent gasoline um, and that's going to be uh, Usually the big names, the mobiles, the, the uh, shell. I know Shell's uh, got uh, really good additives in their gas. Uh, you'd have to do your own homework uh, on, on any other gases. Um, anyway, that's it. All right. Bye-bye. Oh, by the way, advertisement for tomorrow. You got to, um, hopefully, I'm going to be doing a seven-mile loop in Homosasa. It's supposed to be a beautiful trail. Um, so you might want, if you're into hiking, uh, that then be a good video to watch. All right.